Hello there and welcome to part three of four of this extended portrait painting demonstration. And in this painting in particular, you're going to witness every single brushstroke that is from the first brushstroke into the last brushstroke. And so again, uh, this video has been split into four sections and the fourth and last video of this painting will be uploaded in tomorrow's video. That being said, let's get on with the painting. So in order to work on this silhouette, uh, so all of the silhouette around here, I think I'm going to need to use the dark brush, a little bit of Neo McGilp, Ivory Black, Burnt Umber, a little bit of Sap Green. Let's just start to put in this background tone. This goes out towards here. And it tapers in here. This goes up to here. There we go. Now that I'm putting this down, I'm starting to realize that their problem, or well, at least one of the problems, maybe. And here, I know we spent a long time, but I'm cleaning off a brush with the odorless mineral spirits, and I'm gonna just have to retouch that shape there. And you know, even all throughout there, I think that there's much more structure to the zygomatic bone than I had initially indicated before. A little bit more light here. Something's up with the eye. And again, I'm trying to see the entire picture all at once. So even the introduction of that little shape right there is helping me. So the introduction of this shape here is helping me see all of this stuff. So, you know, even the shape of the head. So let's see. Putting in a little kind of chop. All right, so the, um, hmm. yeah, down here, I think I need much more definition. See what's a little bit more light. Gonna make that shape a little smaller. And with the dark brush, gonna go ahead and re-examine this shape and edge at the same time. All right, I'm seeing another trouble area right there. Hopefully I have my fan brush. So I'm gonna use my fan brush to quickly eliminate some glare. And now that I have this background brush, let's go ahead and start to, actually first, 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 I'm gonna get a little bit of a flesh tone just to fit back here and a little bit more than we need. Should be fine. Now, let's go ahead and sculpt this out. That angle is kind of like a leaning this way. So really a lot of this is the the silhouette right now that I'm trying to work on. It's kind of nice to see a big, uh, bold brush stroke. It's paving way like that and putting in some more specificity. I'll tell you what, even in the back side of his ear, it's going to be a little bit more 
light. So cadmium green, ultramarine blue. It's just a little light shape over here. Some of the light around the room, even on the tragus. Some little ambient light there. And I know we've spent a lot of time in these shapes, but nothing, even at this stage, nothing is really finalized yet. And we're giving ourselves room to work, seeing the entire picture all at once. So now that we have this, put some more burnt umber, a little bit of, a little bit more Neo McGilp. And I think that the, I keep shaping the zygomatic bone. I think that that can go up a little more. Very little. Whoops, okay, I kind of just cut into the uh, face a little bit. It's all right. Maybe that's for the best. Maybe I had too much width on the uh, face. It could be. You know, we always have a tendency to kind of paint ourselves into the paintings, which is not always a bad thing, but for me, I have a much wider set face. So I think maybe that was influencing that shape a little bit. So right around here, I think there's even more of a chop kind of cutting into here. And you know, this is definitely how we're drawing with color. It's not for the faint of heart when it comes to, you know, the aesthetic, because this does, every time we introduce a new element, like I said, it usually introduces a new awkward stage. And even once you get into you know, like having all of your elements in there, there's yet another awkward stage. So once you have everything down, that's why I think it's kind of kind of useful to see everything all at once. Just get it over with. Get the awkward stages over with and get into painting. How about that? There, finally, I see it. A little bit of a more exacting shape is required down here. You know, if, if it only takes maybe five or six brush strokes to get something to read in space, what you're not usually seeing, especially in paintings like, you know, like John Singer Sargent's or something like that, you're not seeing all of the intermediate brush strokes that it took to get to that level. And here you're seeing all of them. This is the story of a thousand brush strokes of which only five ended up actually showing up in the final painting. And I think the eyes are starting to bug me now. So let's see. Oh, gotta clean off my brushes again. 
All right, so I cleaned off my uh, brushes. Well, my two flesh tone brushes, but not the dark brush. So this one I didn't necessarily need to clean. So a little bit more of a dark shape there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, look at this. I think that, again, I might have been widening, widening his face a little bit too much. Let's go put in a little bit of a cooler note, ultramarine blue. Just trying to get a much more specific shape. That needs some work, but I'm going to be moving from here to here. All right, so now I'm gonna look at this shape here. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna just uh, get one of the brushes I cleaned. Just kind of move this up. Until we figure out what we need to do. And after I clean off a brush, uh, I like to actually use flake white just so I can get the brush loaded with color again. Because again, Flake White has that property, uh, which it allows you to use more of it. Let's tint it a little bit greener. So Cadmium Green has the property of which allows you to use more of it without the raising the value too much, which in essence just lets you have more paint on the brush, which is what we want. Now the half tone brush. Now that's starting to make a little more sense. Uh, still got some trouble trouble in here. I have to work these shapes out. So let's see. The lighter brush. Tell you what. Tell you what. I'm going to cover that background. Maybe just a different, a change in the way that the picture looks will help me see with a little more clarity. Because right now what I need is clarity. So just more Neo McGilp, Ivory Black, Burnt Umber, I'm gonna make the background the background very dark. And as I'm covering this, I guess I, I can talk a little more about brushes because I do uh, get a lot of brush questions. Um, so with bristle brushes, like I said, notice how I'm using a lot. I'm, I'm able to get a lot of paint on the brush. Uh, one little tip about uh, bristle brushes. So when you want to clean a bristle brush, I would actually suggest um, you know cleaning it off with odorless mineral spirits and uh, wiping it dry, just like you've seen me do already with the uh, paper towel. But then after that, another thing I would do with bristles um, is to clean it off with soap and water. And I, I say this about bristles in particular, I actually noticed that it, it helps me to not do that with my synthetics. With my synthetics, instead I clean them off like the best that I can with just the odorless mineral spirits and they tend to do fine. And we're going to be pushing a little more contrast 
into this portrait. So let me just go ahead and cover the rest of this and then we'll quickly get back into the hair. So I'm gonna put a little bit more alizarin and permanent and I think that made a big difference, didn't it? Covering that background. So we're gonna go ahead and push some more of the darks. So with the alizarin and permanent, right into here. Really gonna try to observe those dark shapes. And we're gonna let some of the light that we left, you know, like in the initial uh, massing in of the hair, we're gonna let some of those brush strokes just sit there and suggest the light planes of the hair. All right, so now I'm gonna switch to the dark brush. And again, we're gonna be pushing the darks a little bit more. And so again, I am filming this live style that is like painting and, uh, you know, painting and talking at the same time. And I have headphones on my ears just because like I mentioned a while ago, noise distracts me really bad. So I, I tend to lose my focus really quickly. Um, I did just hear something around the environment, so I really, uh, you know, I hope that that doesn't distract me from the painting. And look at that, pushing the dark there really is starting to help with the forms. Now obviously uh, the features definitely need some help, so it's a little more cadmium green. What is this brush? I keep confusing my halftone brush and my light light brush. I think this was supposed to be the halftone brush. All right, so now let's go ahead and put in some more dark. So with the alizarin and permanent, right into here. And even in the ear, I think we can push some more dark. Lizard and permanent, cadmium red medium. Definitely gonna be bumping up the contrast. You know, while we're at it, you know, I wanna add cadmium orange back to my palette. I used to have that color. It's a really expensive color, however. All right, so now what did I just do? So that was the light brush, sorry, the dark brush. So I'm gonna clean this brush off. The Odorless Mineral Spirits. And with the, uh, the middle tone brush, I'm gonna add just a little more of a cooler tone. Now this is starting to take a little more shape. You know, and I, I usually say this, every painting is an epic journey. And hopefully, if you're if you stuck along to this point in the painting, you really can tell this is a journey. You know, we don't always have all the answers right away. But we have a general strategy for how to find the, uh, the answers. Let's see here, my dark brush. Burnt umber, ivory black, lizard and permanent. And again, I'm gonna to try to push the contrast even more.
Well, those are on permanent. And I do need some smaller shapes, some smaller brushes now for this. But you know, a sergeant would say, a John Singer sergeant would say to use larger brushes uh, for the task than you need. So we're going to try to stick to that. Let's see here. So this angle could use a little more specificity. Let's see, switching to the light brush. Let's see if we can put in a plane, a top plane for the lower eyelid. And I think that I could put in just a little, little bit of a glimpse of light of the sclera back here. Hopefully not that dark, that got too dark. Something about like that. And then I think as I sit back, I notice that that eye is getting too big. Let's just get into this region of the palette. Again, always give yourself more room to work with. Notice how we can easily move around these shapes. All right, so I'm gonna move you into a close-up shot now because I think you've seen a lot of the, uh, you know, the larger shot with the palette and everything. But I think that now we really need to put in some more specificity. So again, I'm looking at this angle here. I could get more. That could be more of a straight line. Something like that. Gonna add a little bit more warmth into that. And that was just with titanium white and the uh, cadmium red. So let's see. What I want to do is make this super, super realistic. But for me to be able to do that, I think um, I didn't want to do this, but I think I'm going to have to get into smaller brushes. So here we are with a size zero round. And just ivory black and a lizard and permanent. We are going to be pushing the contrast between the darks a little bit more. A little bit more cadmium red medium. And I think that I'm going to need a little more of a half tune, so I'm going to use a size 2 round brush. Not a very specific color, just taking whatever out of the palette that is in the specific value that I want. Because with these smaller shapes, it's not as important to get the right color. Instead, it's much more important to get the value. Now I'm going to put in a smaller edge, or sorry, just dropped on my brush, a softer edge right here. Let's 
softer edge there for the side of the eye. And now with a darker and warmer half tone, we're going to put in shape down here. Trying to keep these shapes super simple because this is not easy. Portrait painting is definitely not one of the easiest subjects in painting, but if you keep your if you keep your elements simple and easy for you to understand, then it is something that is truly enjoyable. You know, just taking our time with all of these shapes. And right now, it may look like I just punched him in the eye there. Uh, sorry, Paul. It, it may look like I uh, I messed up his eye there. But what I'm doing is I'm just putting in a larger shape than I need just to give myself some room to build. And again, I don't have the size brushes that I would like for this, but you know, it's all right. And these brushes are pretty used up, so doing what we can here. So with some titanium white, a little bit of flesh tone. Gonna be pushing this light shape in particular right around the tear duct. Maybe it needs to be a little cooler, so we're gonna use cadmium green. And at this point, I've got the entire thing on, I was gonna say on film, but I've got the entire thing, I've, what's even, what's the word? I've recorded the entire thing, so it's up to me whether to upload everything or to just upload it in segments just to make it shorter. I don't know. Let me know if you appreciate longer videos, because I can certainly do them. It's just I tend to get a lot of complaints just with longer videos just because, you know, portrait painting takes a long time. But I know there's many folks out there that want to see like everything. And this is the story of a thousand brushstrokes of which only five were used at the end. So let's see, I'm looking at the perimeter around the eyes and again, working from the inside out. So now we're starting to steer towards the final contours. So let's see, my half tone brush, I'm gonna get a little bit of a kind of an orangey color. Just taking basically whatever from the palette still. As long as it's in the right value family, we're good to go. You know what, I need a different brush for the lights. See if this one works. Should be working. You know, in this way, I'm kind of letting you edit this video how you would like because you can really scroll through each segment and see the entire thing unfold. I 
It is kind of a risky move though for me to do on this YouTube platform where everything is here and now in the instant. Where is this? It's the opposite. This is slowing down, taking our time, observing the shapes. And even still, I think that this eye keeps giving me problems. So let me, so let me see. A little bit of a grayish color. It might just be needing a little bit more light on the side here. Tell you what, I'm gonna to try to make the best portrait painting I've ever done. And that's really ambitious for me because, you know, when you're a painter and you try to tell yourself, I'm gonna make the best painting ever today. Really, it's just about challenging yourself, I think. But in particular, I owe it to Paulden. He taught me so much. This is my teacher, by the way, that I'm painting. And I know he always paints from life and the, uh, you know, most classical painters will say, or realist painters, most realist painters will say, you know, it's important to always paint from life. But, you know, if I could be painting Paulden from life, I certainly would. But, you know, time and space constraints. A little bit of burnt umber and ivory black. So burnt umber, ivory black. You know, let's put in some cadmium yellow just to get kind of a brown. Then a little bit of alizarin permanent and ivory black. Some cadmium red medium. And we just need a little more cadmium red medium just to get some of the heat in here for the tear duct. Now with the half tone brush. Let's see here, the light light brush. Push this in a little more. We're kind of making the uh, eye a little bit smaller, so we're kind of getting into more specificity. I think I'm going to add a little bit more cadmium green for this shape over here. Getting really specific. Oh, and if you're wondering about that large painting we started a little while ago, I am going to get back to that. Not sure at the time, not sure when this video is going to upload, but um, at the current time for me, that large painting I started, I think like two days ago. So I will return to that. Let's see here, half tone brush. I keep returning to the half tone brush.
Now returning to the dark brush. It's a little bit more of a shadow here. So I will show the palette once in a while. So I just want to get the sclera color back again. So let's just get a little bit of a gray with a little bit of flesh tone. That shape should go around here somewhere. And then I think uh, what you do to one side of the portrait, you want to do to the other side. So again, we're seeing it here. And with a little bit of cadmium yellow deep into this little area here and some cadmium red, we want to get the color for the uh, iris. And now with just a lizard and permanent, Ivory black and a little bit of Neo McGilt medium. We're going to give it our first attempt to get the uh, pupil. Pupil there. Pupil there. Hopefully it's in the right spot. Or hopefully they're in the right spot. I'm going to clean off that brush again just because I really need a smaller brush. And pretty much just going to take a little bit of cadmium green and titanium white. And that's going to be the color for the, uh, the highlight. One there. And then another one right over here. I think hope that worked out. I think those are in a pretty decent spot. I won't be able to tell until I stand back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm still going to continue to develop the forms. I'll tell you what, let me just move this here just so you can see the mixing. I'm going to continue to work on these eyes. Everything else will be kind of keyed based off of the eyes. Meaning everything is going to be gauged based off of the eyes. If I can get the eyes to work, I should be able to move around to the rest. And I think what's bothering me with the rest of the painting is just like the mouth is too far that way. So I'll tell you what, it's really not that difficult to adjust, especially when you're working in this fashion. So let me use a vertical here. So I think what it could be, uh, it's kind of hard for me to tell, especially when we're in close up. It could be that this needs to move out a tiny bit. And that angle, I'm going to have to revisit that angle. If it needs to move, it's not a big deal. But I think perhaps, perhaps this one needs to drop or this one needs to raise. I think since this one 
has had so much work done to it, I think that one's gonna drop. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Just have to clean off my smaller brush. And again, the same color that we had for this. Just wanna figure out how much I wanna drop it. So maybe about there, let's say we drop it to about there. I think that's good. So now what we do is we get the light brush. So let's go ahead and switch you to the palette shot. Get the color that we want. And then we make the adjustment. I'm gonna easily push that shape down. I usually tell my students uh, the uh, portrait is the story of how a bunch of little things either made my day or ruined my day. And by students, I'm referring to a portrait class that I teach at the uh, Howard County Arts Council in Maryland. But I am doing my best to, uh, well, I am trying to create an online teaching resource for, um, you know, folks that are further away. So I think that really helped dropping that down. Now it's not very, uh, you know, this eye is not very well refined, but I think that lowering it a little bit actually helps. This is why I say keep your shape simple and easy. I mean, look how easy it was to drop that shape. And I think that really does help with the, um, I, I guess with the likeness. And again, I'm doing the best that I can to film everything with this one. And I may get really quiet at some times or I may some, say something silly sometimes, so. Just, just know that I'm not really going to be doing much editing for this one. Trying to give you the truth. And now, of course, this has to drop too. But I think that does help with the uh, specificity a little bit. And I think that, uh, let me get the dark brush. I think that I can move this over till I can get it in the right spot. color for the sclera. And again, don't let any of this stuff bother you. I mean, it is actually starting to bother me. So let's just go ahead and simplify. See about the little things that I'm talking about, even this angle, I feel like can adjust. This might need to angle in a tiny bit more. Super, super subtle. All right, so th this is bothering me just because the mouth is a little bit too far that way. So I'm just gonna take the flesh tone brush, just kind of soften over there. I think this was my half tone brush. All right, let's get you to a larger, uh, a larger shot. 